you a bird life. So if you keep an eye out, you might just be lucky enough to spot a beautiful whistling pipe, just like Fletcher. Fletcher, he is a raptor, which is categorised by three key features. Powerful colours, sharp, hooked and curved beak, and incredible vision. Now, being a whistling pipe, he is one of Australia's most widespread species of raptor, as they are able to survive even the harshest of landscapes that our country has to offer. Now, it definitely helps that he'll pretty much take down anything that he can get his talons on, which can vary from your mammals, reptiles, insects, and even your other birds. Now, your kites, they've actually earned the name pirates of our Australian skies, as they're commonly seen harassing even your larger birds of prey, sometimes even three times the size of themselves, with a fresh catch, just to try and steal it for themselves. Now, little Fletcher here, he's got himself a little bit confused. Your raptors, how they work, their talons are incredibly powerful, and they actually lock on to what they believe is a food item. So what he's got is a delicious handful of my leather glove. And he's a little bit confused thinking that is a really nice, hefty meal for himself. <laughs> so what they actually have to do is really think about letting go of that item, because that is their lifeline. They have to grip on, they have to manually think about letting go of every single talent, so he can really freely be able to take off. Now, Fletcher here as well as an individual, he was actually a wild-born bird that came to us because he suffered an injury to his face. Now, unfortunately, that injury left him completely blind in the left eye. Now, that's why it's so important that we actually have places like Australia Zoo to provide a bird like him that is still perfectly healthy other than that infected eyesight with a really good second chance at life. And here he is making the most perfect ambassador for all of his whistling kite counterparts. So, put it together for Fletcher. But now we are going to take this from aerial to aquatic, where we open up a whole new world of hunting, where some species of bird can swim and dive as fast as a fish. And that is exactly how cormorants like this to catch their aquatic meals. So we've just been joined by Albert and his scuba. Albert, the larger of the two, is a greater cormorant, and his scuba, the smaller two-tone bird, is a more high cormorant. And as you can see, they're perfectly designed for life under that water, as they actually lack the waterproof coating on their feathers that many other birds do possess. Whilst this is great for life under the water, birds can't take to the skies with wet feathers. So that's exactly why you see cormorants lining your roommates with those wings outstretched, shaking off any excess water and leaving them outstretched, almost as if they're hanging themselves out to dry. So our wings over here are only two of the five species of cormorant to call Australia home. So, if you find yourself along our waterways, keep an eye out for that we can behaviour and you might just spot yourself a couple of cormorants. Now, I've shown you those two that prefer to dive beneath the water. However, there are some species of water bird that prefer to wade through the shallows. So this next bird, he's actually going to be making his grand entrance from outside of the property. So these birds can soar at the highest of altitudes, and yet aerial prey is not their choice. They're aquatic predators and well equipped fishermen stalking our water lines in search of a fresh catch. These stunning locals of the north have a wingspan of up to two metres. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes glued to the roof line as we are going to right out of the seats of to call Australia home. This here is Dougie. The handsome Douglas here is a black neck stork, or more commonly known to some as a jabiru. Now we are going to check him out as he makes his way into the water. He's going to use those long skinny legs and sharp spear like feet to really stab out and grab his prey. Now things these birds are going for can vary from fish, crustaceans, eels, and up north even juvenile crocodiles. Now a really cool thing about these birds is that they're sexually dimorphic. So you can tell the males from the females just by looking at them. So Douglas, he's got those beautiful dark brown black eyes, while your females will actually possess a really vibrant and bright yellow eye. Now you can actually see this for yourself today, down in that wetlands area where we have a male and a female on display. They're quite the romantics as well, these birds, they're monogamous. So that means they'll make for life, and they build their nests some 20 metres high up on the ground. Now, the reason we bring these beautiful birds out here to show you all is because the 
the last three rely solely on our Broadway's and Ed's fight. So that's why I need something important that we play our part in winning our rubbish correctly to help keep our Broadway's remain clean and clear of pollution for the spiral of words just like these guys for generations still to come. But now you're all a very lucky audience because we are bringing out the most interactive bird and I am not talking about Tello. I'd love to introduce you all to Nat to take it away. Oh, uh, Nerese, thank you. It's absolutely amazing what you do in those birds. Well, good day, everybody. This here is my mate, Tello. And Tello is a very beautiful yellowtail flat copper too. Now, not only has Tello been trained to fly from point to point, but Tello has also been trained to fly from person to person. Now, we would love to demonstrate this all for you today, but for this, we're going to need the help of an adult volunteer from this audience. So, who here would love to meet Tello face to face? Directly in front, the man that was standing up, let me approve her on the grey shirt. That's you, you know, if you could stand up for me, nice and high. Alright, we've got this Tello. Now, for this though, because Tello doesn't know this person, I'm going to need you to pull out a $5 note. Yeah, there's lots of laughing. But as I said, Tello doesn't know this person. So we've trained her to recognise and fly to a common everyday object, which just so happens to be money. So, how'd you go? Have you got any money for me? Oh, a ten, even better. All right, so with that note, if you can fold it in half for me, and fold it in half one more time like a little rectangle. Now place it nice and loosely between two head fingers and hold your arm nice and straight out to the side for me. If you can make the note face upwards, that might be a little bit easier. Perfect. Now tell her should see that note and know exactly who to fly to. See, this is why Tello is one of my most favourite birds. Thank you, darling. Now, before we go, there were so many hands on this side. So, does anyone over here have a 20 or a 50? Oh, well, there's heaps of hands. Okay, well, I can take all your money for days. This bird's great for that. Oh, over here, you've got your teacher in. Okay, teacher. 100? I'm kidding, I can't take all your money. Myself and Tallow, we're very honest and we will return this note for you. So if you could stand up for me and place that arm out to the side. Actually, let's make this nice and easy on Tallow. Can you place both arms out? That's it. Now, uh, flap really hard, fly down and grab it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, just the one arm. But this time with your palm facing upright like a landing platform, Tallow is going to deliver that note via air mail. Now once you place that note in the palm of your hands, just close a few fingers over it. And thank you very much. That's Tallow, my amazing 